Abraham experienced it and his name was changed. Sarah experienced it and she got laughter. Moses experienced it and he went from hiding to leading. David experienced it and became God's beloved. Elijah experienced it and brought down fire. A savior has come to you. A healer has come to you. A deliverer has come to you. A redeemer has come to you. You will not miss your miracle. Now, it's your time. Experience the supernatural in this month's Global Crusade themed The Glorious Visitation of Christ Happening Live in Ghana. God is ready to move. Also featuring our ministers, church workers, and professional conference team enabling grace and power for the end time harvest. The youth aren't left behind as they are moving upward to higher heights with the Impact Academy. Join us from the 28th to 25th of April at Independence Square, Osu, Accra. The word of power would be broadcast worldwide through satellite, radio, TV, and the GCK social media platforms. We will be blessed by glorious music from choirs around the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And everybody said, Amen. Keep on standing, but open your eyes. It's wonderful to be with you for the first time. You have a good building, and it's a good congregation. And the brother who led the choruses, it was wonderful. The church is alive. And I pray that all of us will remain alive in Christ in Jesus' name. And also coming for the first time, it's my pleasure to welcome you. We're studying the uh, gospel according to St. John. Very simple epistle, or very simple uh, gospel. And, uh, but there's something for everyone here today. And I pray the Lord will enrich every life in this study tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus is still the same. He saves, he heals, he sanctifies, he delivers, and he meets all our needs. And I want to assure you tonight, he'll meet your need before you go in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's close our eyes for prayers. Father, in the name of Jesus, we well, thank you tonight and bless your name for this study. We well, thank you because you are leading us into the ocean of the knowledge, of the light, of the enlightenment, and of the truth of the word of God. We are asking tonight that you speak your word to everyone in Jesus' name. And we are asking, Lord, that you drive all darkness away. All ignorance to take away in Jesus' name. Open the pages of scriptures to everyone and strengthen your people. Enlighten your people, lift up your people, and pour blessings upon every life in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. We're coming to the gospel according to St. John. And we're looking at chapter 1. Today, we're looking at it from verse 6. You open your Bible as we read together. John chapter 1. Verse 6, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to be a witness of the light. For all men, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, that is John was not that light. But he was sent to be a witness of the light, capital L, that's referring to the Lord Jesus Christ, the light of the world. In verse 9, that was the true light that lighted every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world. The world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Let's read verse 14 now. It says, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld this glory, 
the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. As we open the verses today, it talks about a man. Look at verse 6 again. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. As you look at the New Testament, you find a number of people called John. This John is John the Baptist, John the Baptizer. He was sent by God as a forerunner of the Lord Jesus Christ. A forerunner means somebody that is heralding the coming of a greater person coming behind him. When a king was coming in those days, there will be an herald that will go forth and tell the people, the king is coming, the king is coming. And here Jesus Christ, the king of kings, and the Lord of lords, he was about to be manifested unto the children of Israel. That's why it says in verse 14, the word became flesh. That's referring to Jesus. And it says, he dwelt among us. And we beheld this glory. We saw his glory. We saw his power. We saw his wonders. He had the glory of the only begotten son of the father. Full of grace and full of truth. And as this king of kings and lord of laws was coming. Here comes John. The father sent him. God the almighty sent him. To herald the coming of of christ that's why it says there was a man called john and he came from the father to declare to announce to proclaim to preach that christ was coming his mission was to announce the coming of christ and to prepare the people to receive him uh, so that they'll have the light of god in them he came to testify that Christ is the true light. He pointed men to Jesus and not to himself. A great lesson for you and for me. As children of God, as sons of God, servants of God, we point people to the Lord Jesus Christ and not to ourselves. Christ brought the light, the knowledge of truth, the truth of salvation, the truth of life eternal to all men, all who believe come to the light and are enlightened, they are convicted, they are saved, they are turned around, their lives are changed, and they are prepared eventually to enter into heaven's eternal light. As we look at the passage today, we're talking about John, we're talking about Jesus, we're talking about the just, about those who come to that light and then the lives are changed. As we are coming today, your life will be turned around. Amen. The topic tonight is the world's response to the witness to Christ. Witness to Christ. That is, as John came and he witnessed to Christ. And he said, this is he. This is the lamb. This is the light. This is the king. This is the savior. This is the Lord. That was his witness. That was his proclamation. And that was his declaration unto the people that he, Christ, is the Lord. He is the light and has come to bring us eternal life. What was the response of the world to that witness? And what was the response of the believers to that witness? And what's your response today to that witness? We're dividing the passage to three parts. Number one, the prophet the witness to Christ. The witness to Christ. The prophet, the witness to Christ. Number two, the peril of the world without Christ. Those who heard the announcement, those who heard the proclamation, and yet they did not accept, they did not receive the peril of the world without Christ. Point number three, our privileges and wonder through Christ. Those who hear and they respond. Those who listen and they believe. And they receive Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. What's the privilege they have? And what wonders will be in their lives? You'll discover that in your life tonight in Jesus' name. Point number one, the prophet, the witness to Christ. We're coming to John chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 6. John chapter 1 verse 6. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. 
the same that same John, the same that same prophet, the same this herald that came to announce that Jesus Christ was coming, the same came for the witness. The purpose, for, the purpose of his coming was very clear. The same John, John the Baptist, the same preacher, John the Baptist, the same witness, John the Baptist, he came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, to bear witness of the light. That is, the people had been in darkness, darkness of religion. The people had been in darkness, the darkness of self-righteousness. They had been in darkness, the darkness of empty profession. But now he came to show them, you've been in darkness, here is the light, and you're welcome to the light. That all men through him might believe. Look at that sentence. That all men through him, through who? Through John, might believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. He was the one pointing Christ unto them, so that all men, all the people that heard him, might believe believe through him of the lord jesus christ look at verse 8 he was not that light john was not that light do not mistake the herald for the savior do not mistake the witness for the one that is going to bring the salvation into your life it tells us in verse 8 he was not that light but he was saying to bear witness of that light as we talk about uh, John the Baptist, it wasn't uh, somebody that was uh, hidden in the scriptures. In fact, prophecy had gone on before him that he was coming. We're coming to Isaiah chapter 40, talking about John. Isaiah chapter 40, the same prophet that spoke about the Lord Jesus Christ, that he'll be born of a virgin. The same prophet that spoke about the Lord Jesus Christ, that his name will be Emmanuel, that same person that said, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. That same prophet spoke about John the Baptist. We're coming to Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 3 it says the voice of him that cries in the wilderness prepare ye the way of the lord make straight in the desert a highway for our god every valley shall be exalted and every mountain and hill shall be made low and the crooked shall be made straight and the rough places plain and the glory of the lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together you'll see it tonight yeah. you'll experience it tonight for the for the mouth of the lord has spoken it it says that the voice of the lord the voice of the servant of the lord crying in the wilderness and then just before john the baptist was born an angel came from heaven and appeared unto the father and then that angel also uh, brought a message to the mother elizabeth let us look at uh, luke chapter one we're looking at uh, this uh, a great man of god that the birth was prophesied before he ever was even conceived we're looking at uh, luke chapter one verse 13 it says for the angel of the lord uh, said unto the angel said unto him fear not zacharias for thy prayer is answered, your prayer is answered. Yeah. And thy wife Elizabeth shall bear a son, and thou shalt call his name, tell me out loud, John. And the angel came to Zacharias and said, you're going to have a son through your wife, old wife Elizabeth, and the name of that child shall be John, and thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. Look at this, and it shall be great in the sight of the Lord. He wasn't even conceived yet. But the angel was describing what his life will be and what his ministry will be and what the power of the Lord will be in his life. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord and he shall drink neither wine nor strong drink and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost from his mother's womb. And many of the children of Israel shall return to the Lord their God. That was to be the ministry of John the Baptist. He was to proclaim the word of God. 
God. The word of repentance, the word of conversion, the word that turns a sinner unto the Lord, and then he turns them unto righteousness. Verse 17, and he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just and to make ready. Look at that. And to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. It was to prepare their mind. It was to make them be in great expectation for the Lord. To prepare them for the coming of the Lord. And eventually he came. As he came, he began to preach the word of God. That's how, that's how he made his witness known. And that's why he declared who Jesus Christ was. That's how he pointed them unto the Lord. Matthew chapter 3. Matthew chapter 3. We're looking at verse 1. Matthew chapter 3 verse 1. In those days came John the Baptist. What's the next word there? Preaching. Preaching, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He said, The king is about to come. And because the king is about to come, his kingdom is at hand. And therefore, repent so that you'll get into that kingdom. You see, we who are Christian ministers today, we're called also to be witnesses. That he is what a witness of the Lord Jesus Christ, that he is Savior. A believer today is supposed to be a witness. And as we're thinking and talking about it, John, that same message comes to you and comes to me and comes to every one of us that John was a witness. And what kind of witness was he? A courageous witness he was. A courageous preacher he was. And he declared the word of the Lord unto the people, pointing out that Christ is the Savior. Christ is the Messiah. They should receive and accept Christ into their lives. And as we look at John today, and we see how he bore witness, how he gave testimony, how he preached the word, how he declared the might of God unto the people, the blessing comes to us. The inspiration comes to us. The example comes to us. The model comes to us. Look at how John did it. And we're going to do the same. I said we're going to do the same. Let me show you before I continue with John and talk about the church and talk about the believers and talk about the ministers of the gospel so that we understand as we're talking about John, we're not talking about John in isolation. We're talking about John because what he did was supposed to do. He was a witness. Remember point number one, the prophet, the witness to Christ or the witness of Christ. We're looking at Luke chapter 24 Luke chapter 24 I'm reading from verse 46 and what we're following now we're talking about believers we're talking about the servants of God we're talking about the preachers we're talking about the pastors that we too we are witnesses we're looking at Luke chapter 24 verse 46 and said unto them thus it is written and thus it behoove Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at jerusalem verse 48 we're going to read this together one two three go and ye are witnesses of these things. He's talking to all believers, all disciples, all the apostles, all the servants of God, all the children of God. And ye are witnesses of these things. John was a witness. I am a witness. You are a witness. We are witnesses of these things. How do we bear that witness? Hold that in your mind. We're looking at John chapter 15. John chapter 15, we're reading from verse 26. In John chapter 15, verse 26, there is it. But when the comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceeded from the Father, he shall testify of me. Look at verse 27. And ye also, and ye also shall be a witness. He's telling us 
we, we get saved, we get sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, and the Comforter abides in us. And he tells us in verse 27, And ye shall bear witness, because ye have been with me from the beginning. This call the Lord has given you, the Lord has given me, the Lord has given us all, we will fulfill in Jesus' name. Acts of the Apostles chapter 1 verse 8. Uh, Acts chapter 1 verse 8. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Do you remember what we read about John? He'll be filled with the Holy Ghost from his mother's womb. And in the power of the Holy Ghost, like the power upon Elijah, he will go forth and bear witness unto Christ, and bear witness of Christ uh, powerfully and mightily. The same thing, that you are a believer, I'm a believer, we are believers, we are saved, we are sanctified, and we are filled and saturated and immersed and baptized in the Holy Ghost, he shall receive power. After the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be, tell me the word there, witnesses, witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto, unto the uttermost part of the earth. What is that telling us? It's telling us it's not only at Jerusalem, the first century. It's not only Samaria, Judea, the first century, but unto the uttermost part of the earth. Even at this time, almost at the end of the age, at the end of the world, we are still to bear witnesses as well. Now in Acts of the Apostles chapter 10. Acts of the Apostles chapter 10, reading from verse 39. It says, and we are witnesses. It's very clear from the word of God. Believers are supposed to be witnesses. And here Peter was talking in the house of Cornelius. And he says, you know what? We're witnesses. We're saved. We're disciples. We're the apostles. He gave us the commission. He gave us the word. And he says, we are witnesses of all these things. Both what he did in the land of, of, of the Jews. And in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hanged on a tree. Come to verse 43. In verse 43, to him give all the prophets witness. Not only John. And not only the apostles, but all the prophets, they even testified of him. What were they saying? They were saying, he is coming. Isaiah testified of him. The psalmist testified of him. Jeremiah testified of him. Ezekiel testified of him. Zechariah, Old Testament, they testified of him. Even Moses, a prophet like unto me, will the Lord give unto you. He will speak the mind of the Father, the mind of God unto you. And you must hear him all the prophets witness concerning him that through his name whosoever believeth in him should have remission of sins as they bore witness we're going to be a witness acts chapter 26 john what it was a witness the apostles were witnesses and we today were witnesses as well acts of the apostles chapter 26 we're reading from verse 16 acts chapter 26 verse 16 but rise and stand upon thy feet for i have appeared unto thee for this purpose to make thee minister and a witness you see that everyone christ called Everyone Christ appeared to. Everyone Christ gave commission to. He wanted everyone to be a witness, a minister, and a witness. Both of these things which thou hast seen, and of those things in the which I will appear unto thee, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles, unto whom now I send thee to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness unto light. You remember what John was saying? John was saying, Christ is the light. He was trying to open their eyes to the truth of the very fact that Jesus is the Savior, and Jesus is the Lord, and Jesus is the King. And here is the same thing we are to do, and the same thing Paul was to do, to open their eyes, and to turn them from darkness to light, and from the power of Satan, unto God that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. And then look at verse 19 whereupon O King Agrippa 
I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. You'll not be disobedient to the heavenly vision in Jesus' name. We're witnesses. And we're going to witness confidently, courageously, and without any compromise. We're going to witness in Jesus' name. First John chapter 1 verse 2. In 1 John chapter 1, verse 2, it says, For the life was manifested. You remember? And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we saw his glory. His glory was manifested. It was full of grace and truth. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it and bear witness. We've got it, we bear witness. We've experienced it, we bear witness. If we're saved, you can say, praise the Lord, I'm saved, therefore I bear witness. I'm sanctified, therefore I bear witness. I have tasted the goodness of the Lord, and I know that he has all power to do all things, therefore I witness, it says, for the life was manifested and we have seen it and bear witness and show unto you that eternal life which was with the father and was manifested unto us now we've seen that john was a witness and that we too we are witnesses and the reason why we're studying all this is that we will learn from him and see the way he witnessed and by the grace of god that same power will be in your life that same conviction will be in your life and confidently courageously without compromise every one of us will be a good witness in jesus name we're coming back now to john chapter one john chapter one i'm reading from verse six john chapter one i'm reading from verse six i'm waiting for you to open your bible to john chapter one verse verse what verse six it says and there was a man sent from god whose name was John. Well, but John is gone. Why are we here today? Because there is a man sent from God whose name was, what's your name? There is a woman sent from God whose name is, what's your name? You are not sent by Satan to this world. You are not sent by people to this world. Daddy and mommy might have been used of God to bring you into the world. Like God used Zechariah and Elizabeth to bring John into the world. But when he talks about John coming to the world, it's not Zechariah that brought them. And it's not Elizabeth that brought him. It was God himself. The same thing with you. Of course, you are born by a father and a mother. But the Lord has sent you here. The purpose for which the Lord has sent you, you will fulfill. And the reason why you are here, you are not just breathing, and you are not just eating, and you are not just saved, you are not saved in vain, your salvation will not be in vain. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness, the same John. He came for a witness to be a witness of the light, to bear witness. He woke up in the morning, he said, this is my life, and this is why I'm here, and this is the reason why I live, and it is to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but he was saying to be a witness of the light he was not the light but he was saying to be a witness of the light you'll be a witness of the light but the question is this how did john bear witness because if you don't know you might be doing a kind of sloppy work a kind of work that is not having any foundation you say i'm bearing witness to you. i'm bearing witness to you but let's learn how did john bear witness number one he was a faithful witness he was a faithful witness to the young to the old to the low to the high to the rich to the poor a faithful witness we're looking at luke chapter 3 luke chapter 3 and i'm reading from verse 8 luke chapter 3 verse 8 it tells us bring forth therefore fruits worthy of repentance and uh, begin not to say within yourselves we have abraham to our father for i say unto you that that god is able of these stones to raise up children unto abraham and now also 
The axe is laid unto the root of the tree. Every tree, where, therefore, which bringeth not forth good fruit, is hewn down, is cut down, and cast into the fire. Can you see the boldness of the man, the courage of the man? Can you see the fearlessness of the man? Can you see the faithfulness of the man? And then eventually people began to ask him, they say, what are we going to do? Look at verse 12. And then came also the publicans to be baptized, and said unto him, Master, what shall we do? And he said unto them, exact no more than that which is appointed you. And in verse 14, and the soldiers likewise demanded of him, saying, and what shall we do? And he said unto them, do, no, do violence to no man, neither accuse any falsely, and be content, be, be satisfied with your wages. And so you can see that he was a faithful a witness and the same thing we're to do the lord has given us the word and then we go out faithfully and we declare the word we're not afraid of the faces of the people of the stature of the people of the height of the people of the wealth of the people of the political authority of the people we sage the way she be said number one it was a faithful witness number two a fearless witness. A fearless witness. We're coming to Mark chapter 6. Mark chapter 6. And here we're reading from verse 17. Mark chapter 6. Reading from verse 17. A fearless witness. Here we are in chapter 6 verse 17. For Herod himself had sent forth and laid hold upon John. And bound him in prison for Herodias' sake. His brother Philip's wife, for he had married her. For John had said unto Herod, It is not lawful for thee to have thy brother's wife. Herod was a king, a brutal king, a wicked king, a ferocious king. And even then, when he did something wrong, and it was uh, the place of uh, John to speak to him, he said, That's not right. That's not right. It is wrong for you. It is not lawful for you. Not right for you to take your brother's wife. He was a fearless witness. And as you think about yourself, you're a pastor, a location pastor. As you think about yourself, you're a house fellowship leader. As you think about yourself, you're a woman leader. As you think about yourself, you're a group pastor. As you think about yourself, region overseer, state overseer. Here is something that has gone wrong. And you see that man every day. You see that woman every day. And you know that that man is not living right. You, think, you know things are not right. Not right with his marriage. Not right with his family. Not right in his character. Not right in his disposition not right in his relationship with wife husband or anybody and then you say well we can't say anything he is a pastor there in his own right he is a coordinator there in his own right he's a woman leader there in his own right and i'm a leader in my own right but you're over them you're the group pastor you're the region overseer you have to be as bold as john number one a faithful witness that you will be give me a good amen, amen. But you know today, there are people who are not, they know the word, they know the Bible. If you had them preach, if you had them go from verse to verse, you say, my, my, this brother knows the Bible, this sister knows the Bible. But when it comes to the time to apply it and to point to Herod and say, uh-uh, you can't do that. You can't do that and still remain a preacher in the church. You can't do that and still remain a coordinator. They cannot do that. They, they kind of check out they say they turn their eyes the other way as if they don't know as if they cannot see but in the case of john he didn't turn his eyes the other way he was a faithful witness god is preparing you for that you will be he was a fearless witness god is doing that in your life you will be in jesus name number three it was a flaming 
fiery witness flaming fiery witness even jesus christ testified about him in john chapter 5 the kind of witness it was the kind of witness fiery and uh, you know kind of uh, flaming uh, flaming witness we're looking at john chapter 5 john chapter 5 and i'm reading here from verse 33 john chapter 5 verse 33 he sent unto john and be a witness unto the truth. You say to John, didn't you? And you asked him, you wanted to know from him about me. Look at verse 35. It was a burning and a shining light. And ye were willing for a season uh, to rejoice in his light. It's telling us that when we come to bear witness, you stand up in the bus, you are bearing witness, or you stand up at the street corner, you are bearing witness, or you are in your community and you are bearing witness witness or is the morning cry and you are bearing witness and you are saying that Jesus is Lord and Jesus is Savior. There is no other name whereby we must be saved except the name of Jesus. You are not shaking and you are not trembling and you are not timid and you are not acting as if you are not sure a flaming and a fiery witness it was and Jesus Christ bore witness to him saying it was a burning and a shining light and ye were willing for a season to rejoice in his light I pray that this same fire of the Holy Ghost that John had will come into every one of us that the preacher will be flaming and fiery. That the preacher will be a confident person. That the preacher will be somebody that knows what he's talking about. Because you're trying to get people out of sin, out of hell. And you're transporting them and transferring them to heaven. It's a great job. It's not, for a, it's not a job for somebody who is weak in the knee. And weak at the backbone. And weak in the conscience. And weak in his life. The declaration will be number one. Uh, faithful number one, number two it will be fe fe uh, fearless number three it will be flaming and fiery number four a fourth right witness a fourth right witness he said what he meant and he meant what he said and there was no confusion in the minds of the people a forthright witness he was we're looking at uh, matthew here matthew chapter 3 and verses 7 and 8 matthew chapter 3 verses 7 and 8 and you see the kind of witness that john was matthew chapter 3 reading from verse 7 but when he saw many of the pharisees and sadducees come to his baptism he said unto them "O generation of vipers you see that he wasn't missing words he wasn't trying to use some sweet words that had no meaning at all but yeah, he used words that will kind of pinch them and prick them and drive them to repentance and the same thing we ought to do if you're a real witness and you're a forthright witness look at this old generation of vipers who has wanted to flee from the road to come bring forth therefore fruits meet unto repentance and then number five was a fervent witness a fervent witness you know it wasn't a preaching and dozing while preaching it wasn't preaching and sleeping while preaching slumbering while preaching it wasn't a preaching as if you know and you're to, when will that man get out of that place it doesn't even have energy it doesn't have the strength it doesn't have conviction what he's saying is not coming out of the death of his heart he's talking superficially he's talking as if they're they are forcing him to say what he's saying. But you know, this uh, John was a fervent, uh, a fervent witness. In fact, when you see one of the people they brought up, one of the people they raised up, and John had gone, and the fire still remained in that one that he brought up. Acts of the Apostles, I'm looking at chapter 18. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 18. Uh, we're reading from verse 25. Acts chapter 18. 25 it says this man talking about apollos this man was instructed in the way of the lord and being fervent in spirit fervent in spirit fervent in spirit he spake and taught diligently the things of the lord knowing only the baptism of john he was a disciple of john he learned that from john and the same fire the same fury and the same force and the same fervent and the same flame he saw in a john 
he caught that and even though john was away that flame was still there after the bible study i'll go to another location i'll leave the flame here behind i leave the power behind and you'll be aspiring and fervent in jesus name number six he was a faultless witness a faultless witness he spoke the truth only the truth and what he said you couldn't find fault what what he was a preaching a faultless witness we're looking at matthew chapter 11 matthew chapter 11 and i'm reading from verse 7 matthew chapter 11 and we're reading from verse 7 in verse 7 he tells us and and as the and as they departed jesus began to say unto the multitude concerning John. Now Jesus was going to talk about John. You know Jesus, he will not flatter anyone. You know Jesus, he'll speak, speak the truth about anyone. And Jesus now was talking about John, who went he out into the wilderness to see. Him. He reached shaking with the wind. But what went he out for to see? A man closed his soft raiment. Behold, they that wear soft clothing are in the king's houses but what went ye out for to see a prophet yea i say unto you i'm more than a prophet for this is he here is christ talking about him i pray christ will talk about you talk about you to people talk about you to the angels talk about you in heaven and when you eventually leave this place and you go up yonder jesus will point to you and say that's the one i was talking about what are you there? He'll talk about you. I said he'll talk about you. There'll be no falsehood in your life in Jesus' name. No fault in your life in Jesus' name. Look at this. He said, for this is he of whom it is written. Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare the way before thee. Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there has not risen a greater than John the Baptist. There has not risen a greater than John the Baptist baptist but he reserved this for you notwithstanding he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he you'll come to your position you'll get to that place he wants you to be as he was faultless john was faultless you'll be faultless in jesus name I said John was, number one, a faithful witness. Number two, he was a fearless witness. Number three, he was a flaming, fiery witness. Number four, he was a forthright witness. Number five, he was a fervent witness. Number six, a faultless witness. Number seven, a fulfilled witness. A fulfilled witness. He didn't stop his journey halfway through. It wasn't somebody who would say, oh, we'll start on a journey and not end the journey. It wasn't somebody that will start witnessing and then at the middle of the road, middle of the year, he was tired and then he will quit. No, he said, I will never quit. Somebody there, I will never quit. They will not run you out of the ministry. They will not take you out of your assignment. The reason why God brought you into this life, you will fulfill in Jesus' name. I thank God for the people who are here today and something great is awaiting you. A fulfilled ministry. A powerful ministry. You will not be tired. If you were tired before tonight, you will wake up. The strength of the Almighty will come into your life in Jesus' name. And all people who are hearing me anywhere you are now, power will enter into your life. And then if you have been saying, I'm going to lay down, I'm tired, I don't want to continue, you will start all over again. Because the energy of the Spirit will be in your life tonight, in Jesus' name. Number seven, what did I say it was? Number seven. A fulfilled witness. We're looking at Acts of the Apostles, chapter 13. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 13. And we're looking at verse 25. And as John fulfilled his cause. Wonderful. Acts chapter 13, verse 25. And as John fulfilled his cause, he said, 
What think ye that I am? I am not he. I am not the Christ. But behold, there cometh one after me, whose shoes of, the, of his feet I am not worthy to lose. You see, he was until the very end. The same message is started with, I'm not the Christ, he is the Christ. I'm not the king, he is the king. I'm not the savior, he is the savior. And he witnessed that boldly. He did that to the very end. The work the Lord has committed into your hand, you'll do to the very end in Jesus' name. A faithful witness, a fearless witness, a flaming fiery witness, a, fear, a, a forthright witness, and then a fervent witness, a faultless witness, a fulfilled witness, number eight, final, a futuristic witness futuristic witness his witness was not only for that time for that age for that period a futuristic witness he was talking about the future he talked about the time when judgment will come he talked about hell he talked about heaven he talked about the great beyond he talked about what will happen when we leave this world we're looking at matthew chapter 3 matthew chapter 3 I'm reading from verse, verse 9. A futuristic witness. Futuristic witness. Matthew chapter 3. And we're reading from verse 9. And think not to say within yourself, We have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able of these tools to raise up children unto Abraham. That's future. That's future. Children. That is, you know, the, the Jewish people, they counted the Gentiles as tools. They had no conscience. They had no life. They, they hardened. And then those tombs, they said there was no future for them. He said, but I'm telling you that God is able to raise up of those tombs and raise up them as children for Abraham. Look at verse 10. And now the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. And therefore, every tree which beareth not forth good fruit is sealed down and cast into the fire. That's still future. It's talking about if those people die in their sins, the Lord will cut them off with the axe of judgment and throw them into hellfire future. And I, indeed, I baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall, that's future, he shall, that's future, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. He talked about the coming of the Holy Ghost. He has spoken about repentance. He has spoken about righteousness. And he has spoken about restitution. He has spoken about holiness. Now he's speaking about the baptism in the Holy Ghost, which will come after Christ has gone to heaven. He says, Usefan is in his son. And he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather the wheat into his garner. That's talking about heaven. That is, those who are like wheat. The people that are, that there's no evil in them. There's no tire in them. He'll gather them into the Ghana. He's talking about heaven there. And then he goes on, but he will burn up the chaff with what kind of fire? What, what is that? Hellfire is talking about the future. He was a futuristic witness. Are you as faithful as he was? You're called to be a leader. Called to be a pastor, called to be a witness, a believer, and you're called to be a witness as well. Are you a faithful witness? Are you a fearless witness? Are you a flaming, fiery witness? Are you a forthright witness? Do you say what you mean and mean what you say about the way of life eternal? Are you a focused Christian? A witness? Are you a fervent witness? A faultless witness? A fruitful witness? Are you a futuristic a witness? Talking about when Christ will come and talking confidently, assuredly, because you know Christ is coming. Let's examine ourselves and let us go back to the Lord and say, Lord, I've not done everything the way I should have done them, but from today, that fire, that power, let it be in me and I will be all you want me to be in Jesus' name. And it will happen in your life and through your life in Jesus' name. Point number two now, we're coming to John chapter 1. John chapter 1, the peril of the world without Christ. The peril of the world. 
without Christ. We're talking, we're looking at John chapter 1, and I'm reading from verse 9. John chapter 1, verse 9. It says, That was the true light that lighted every man that cometh into the world. Here is John talking about Jesus. And you remember what Jesus said? Jesus said, I am the light of the world. That agrees with what John is saying here. He says, that was the true light, Jesus Christ, that lighteth every man, every man that cometh into the world. Maybe you don't understand that. And you're saying, ah, you see light to everyone. I know people who are in darkness. I know people who have not received that light. Yes, he was the true light, which lighteth every man. Christ is to the souls of men what the sun is to the whole world. Only one sun shining over there. And that's the only one sun that gives light to the whole world. And that's what Christ is to the souls of all men everywhere. If millions of mankind shut their eyes or they bandage their eyes and their darkness and the remaining darkness is not the fault of the sun it's the fault of those people that deliberately close their eyes there is no light for sinners except in the lord jesus christ alone why are there some people who are still in darkness look at it in verse 10 he was in the world and the world was made by him Think about that. He was in the world, and the world was made by him. Not just like saying, that's the landlord. And the landlord built that house, and yet it says, and the world knew him not. There are people that even reject the landlord. They don't recognize the landlord, and they will not pay their dues to the landlord. That's exactly what the people were at the time of Christ. He created the whole world. Without him was not anything made that was made. He made everything, all things things in him consist and yet it says it was in the world it was the world was created by him and the world knew him not he came unto his own and his own received him not why didn't they receive him why didn't they accept him what did he say here is the creator in the beginning was the world and the world was with God and the world was God and the world was created by this world the same was in the beginning with, uh, with God all things were made by him without him was not anything made that was made and then joyfully receive him let me tell you the reason why John chapter 3 John chapter 3 we're reading from verse 19 why he came to the world and the world did not receive him john chapter 3 verse 19 this is the condemnation that light has come into the world and men loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil they didn't want to repent that's why they hated the light they didn't want to turn away from the wickedness. That's why they hated the Lord. It says in verse 20, For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. That's the reason they didn't come. He was that light, and he is still that light. And the people that love the light, and the people that love a new life, a new creature and they want to get to heaven and they are happy that the light is shining onto their heart yes it brings conviction and then it brings you on your knees to confess and then to turn away from your sin and to have conversion but if you want a new life and you love that new life you will happily come to the lord if the devil has not blindfolded you i pray the devil will not blindfold you Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, we're reading here from verse 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. Have you opened your Bible? First, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. Uh, tell me the first words there. Okay, you've got it. In whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not. The God of this world. They, they allow Satan to oppress them. They allow Satan to blindfold them. That's why he was in the world. And the world was made by him. And the world knew him not. Because they deliberately and personally and voluntarily made in that darkness of the devil. In whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ who is the image of God shall shine unto them. I pray you will not be under the spell of the devil. 
under the control of the devil all those who are not accepting the light all those who remain in darkness and they remain in their secret society in their occultism and they remain in the works of darkness and the works of the night all those people they voluntarily yield themselves to satan and they want to avoid having the light of the lord jesus christ we're looking at ephesians chapter 2 verse 2 Ephesians chapter 2, reading from verse 2. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2, wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now walketh in the children of disobedience. They are under the control of the evil spirit, under the control of demons, under the control of those uh, wicked spirits. Therefore, that's why they are hiding in darkness. That's why they dig a hole psychologically, dig a hole spiritually, and then they crawl into it so that they can avoid the light of the spirit son it says in verse in verse 3 among whom also we all had a conversation in times past in the lust of the flesh fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind and were by nature the children of wrath even as others uh, that's the reason they don't have christ in their lives that's the reason they are not opening up christ is saying behold i stand at the door and knock if anyone hears my voice and opens the door i will come into him he can come into you today as savior as sanctifier as healer as deliverer as the lord of lords and the king of kings as you open your heart unto him and then you will not be like all these people in the world who are closing their minds and closing their hearts to the light of the gospel look at uh, verse 12 that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenant of promise, having no hope without God in the world. The people who do not have Christ, there's no hope for them. I pray tonight, hope will come for you. And I pray that Christ will live mighty in your life in Jesus' name. In Second Peter chapter 2, the reason why these people, why they do not have Christ in their lives, why they do not receive Christ in their lives, that he came unto his own, and his own received him not. He was in the world, and the world knew him not. You know why? Because they deliberately glued themselves to the pollutions of the world. Second Peter chapter 2 verse 20. Second Peter chapter 2 verse 20, for if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the, of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they again entangle therein and overcome, the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. That is, deliberately, they go into the pollutions of the world, in, into all those defilement, all those defiling things in the world, and deliberately, even those who have been saved before, and they came to know the Lord, they, they go back to the world again. I will not go to the world anymore. I said I will not go back anymore. Because those who go back, he tells us what happens to them. Look at verse 21. For it, for it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. It is, but it has happened unto them. It will not happen to you. I say it will not happen to you, but it is happened unto them according to the true proverb. The dog is turned to his own vomit again, and they saw the pig, the swine that was washed to a wallowing in the mire. That's why Christ was of no benefit unto them. In First John chapter 3, verse 1. First John chapter 3, verse 1. Beloved, behold. What manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not. Look at this. Because, tell me, it knew him not. Because the world, worldly minded people, they don't even want to know. They don't want to see the light. They don't want to have the Savior. They don't want to have salvation. It says, because it knew him not. First John chapter 5 verse 19. First John chapter 5, reading from verse 19, it says, And we know that we are of God, but the whole world, tell me, 
lies in wickedness. That's why he came to them and they love their wickedness. They love their evil. They do not want to come to that, uh, to that light because the whole world lies in wickedness in the wicked one. Revelation chapter 12 verse 9. Revelation chapter 12 verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan which deceives the whole world. They're deceived. Anybody that hears the word of God, the word of Christ, and sees the light, and then he runs away from the light and decides to stay in, in darkness, it says the devil had deceived him. Satan has deceived him. That old serpent has deceived him. I pray it will not deceive you. You will not be under the deception of Satan, the serpent, and the devil in Jesus' name. Which deceives the whole world and he was cast out into the earth. And his angels were cast out with him. The people who prefer darkness, they prefer evil, they prefer ignorance, they prefer deception, falsehood, damnation. They will pay a great price. Do you know people pay a great price to remain in darkness? They shut themselves up in darkness and they pay dear price. And eventually when they die, if they die in that darkness, they're going to pay the price for all eternity because they remain in darkness. Thank God I've come out of darkness. I say, thank God I've come out of darkness. And I will never get back there again in Jesus' name. Say it for yourself. God, confirm your desires in Jesus' name. We're coming to point number three now. Our privileges and wonder through Christ. Our privileges and wonder through Christ. So we're coming to John chapter 1. John chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 12. But... As many as received him. Think about that. All the world around them rejected. All the world around them remained in darkness. All the world around them. They locked their doors and they closed their eyes and they closed their minds and they received him not. But this one said, I have my life to live. I'm going to take a personal decision. I'm going to come to the Lord. I'm not going to allow anything to lock me up in darkness. And so it says one by one they received him as many as received him to them he gave power to become the sons of God even to them that believe on his name who are born not of blood nor of the will of the flesh nor of the will of man but of God. How do you understand that verse 13? They were born. It's not talking okay about the natural birth. The natural birth born of blood. The natural birth born of the will of the flesh. Daddy and mommy came together. And because of their decision and their will and their desire, he was giving birth to born of the will of the flesh. Of the will of man. It's the man that says, I want a child now. And then goes to the wife and then has a child but he says these we're not talking about those who are born naturally we're not talking about those who are born physically which were born not of blood nor of the will of the flesh nor of the will of man but of God born of God I said born of God I said born of God I pray it will happen to you in Jesus name we have the privilege, those who are born of God, those who truly believe, and those who truly receive, we have the privilege of being sons of God. We are adopted as members of his family. We are adopted into the family of God, and it confers upon us the dignity of being sons and daughters of the Almighty, and it gives us the power, the power to become sons, and it gives us the divine nature. At birth, we have the grace of God. In life, we have godliness, and in eternity, we'll have glory that you never will fade away in Jesus' name. Uh, look at this ones, those who receive and those who believe, and then become the sons of God. Galatians chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 26. Galatians chapter 3, we're reading from verse 26. Galatians chapter 3, verse 26. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. By faith in Christ Jesus. You turn away from your sin. 
and you turn away from yourself and you turn to the Lord Jesus Christ and you say he will be my savior I give my heart I give my soul, I give my life, I give everything to him. And I will not uh, withdraw anything from him. And you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And then the Spirit of God will bear witness in your heart. You are now a child of God. Give me a good amen there. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Verses 17 and 18. Wherefore, come out from among them. And be ye separate, says the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. And I will be a father unto you. And ye shall be my sons and my daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Have you ever thought about it to be the son or the daughter of a great person here on earth, of a rich man here on earth? of a great doctor here on earth but is calling you to something beyond that the almighty himself the one that creates the one that heals the one that provides the one that can turn every bad situation to become normal in your life he says come out identify yourself and show that you want me to be your father and then i'll be your father you'll be my son you'll be my daughter says the lord almighty if it has not happened before it will happen tonight look at luke chapter 10 see what happens when you become a child of god like that as many as received him to them he gave power to become the sons of god even to those who believe on his name luke chapter 10 verse 20 notwithstanding in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you but rather look at this rather rejoice because you tell me yourself you tell me yourself talk about yourself because your names are reaching in heaven those are the people they come out of the world out of darkness they say i want to be a child of the almighty a son a daughter of the almighty and then your name is reaching in heaven we're coming back to galatians chapter 4 galatians chapter 4 and we're reading from verse 4 galatians chapter 4 and we're reading now from verse 4 galatians chapter 4 verse 4 but when the fullness of the time was come god sent his son made of a woman made under the law to redeem them that were under the law redemption is coming for you that we might receive the adoption of sons. He adopts you into the family of God. And because ye are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his father into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father, Daddy, Father. He makes you to know that God loves you. And now from your heart, the spirit is making you to say, Abba, Father wherefore in verse 7 thou art no more a servant but a son and if a son then an heir of God through Christ everything God has now belongs to you Amen. goodness will never stop in your life Amen. because now you are a child of God in Romans chapter 8 Romans chapter 8 I'm reading from verse 14 Romans chapter 8 we're looking at verse 14 for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. You see that? It's not like something is in the future. Maybe it will happen much, much later. Today, it is happening. If you're already a child of God, it's reminding you of who you are, of the privilege you have, and of the wonder of God in your life. And if you are not yet a child of God, very simple, you come out, you say, I'll not be a child of Satan anymore. I'll not belong to darkness anymore. I'm not going to give my soul, my heart, my life, my destiny into the hands of Satan. I'm going to belong to the Lord entirely, body, spirit, soul, and body. And then it says, as many as are 
led by the spirit of God. They are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. But ye have received the spirit of, that, of adoption whereby we cry. Tell me out loud. Abba, Father, the Spirit beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we also might be glorified together. We'll be glorified together in Jesus' name. Now, born of God. You see that uh, chapter 13? Look at that again. Which were born, which were born not of the will of man, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of any man, but they are born of God. John chapter 1 verse 13, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but born of God. What's that, what does that mean? What's the implication? That now you give your life to Christ and you belong to Christ. It's not just a part of you belonging to Christ. Your soul belongs to Christ. Your heart belongs to Christ. Your spirit belongs to Christ. Your body belongs to Christ. Everything about you belongs to Christ. And when you are totally, entirely, unreservedly belonging to Christ, and you are born of God, what's the result in your life? What's the implication in your life? First Peter chapter 1 verse 23. First Peter chapter 1 verse 23, being born again. Not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. It liveth and abideth forever. And then we're told in First John chapter 3, First John chapter 3, I'm reading here from verse 1. First John chapter 3, and we're reading from verse 1. It says in verse 1, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. I am called the Son of God. I am called Son of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. When will you be the Son of God? Now, now. Some people think nobody can tell, nobody can know. Until we get over there, thank God I know. Thank God I know. Because it says, beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. In verse 3, and every man that has this hope in him purifies himself, even as he is pure. Look at verse 9. And whosoever is born of God, who is that? Whosoever is born of God, I said, who is that? Whosoever is born of God, anybody there? Wonderful. The Lord will confirm it in your life. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin, will not continue uh, to steal and to kill and to commit abortion and to do all those uh, dirty, dirty things. Whosoever is born of God, are they still in the house? does not commit sin for his seed remaineth in him and he cannot sin because because is born of God in a first John chapter 5 verse 18 first John chapter 5 verse 18 we know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not are you still there are you still born of God amen I said amen we know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not, but he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and that wicked one toucheth him not. We're children of God. We're sons of God. We're born of God. As sons of God, we have, number one, a heavenly father. Heavenly Father, and if you've been able not to give good gifts unto your children, how much more have your Father who is in heaven give good things unto them that ask him? As um, sons of God, we have 
heavenly forgiveness, not just earthly forgiveness, from heaven. He sends the message to our hearts. He says, all your sins are forgiven because, he tells us, your sins are forgiven. As the sons of God, we're in the heavenly family, heavenly family that you'll find in Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 and 15. And then, as the sons of God, we have the heavenly friend, the friend that sticketh closer than a brother. He's always with us all. He will never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He will stay with you as a friend. We have a father in heaven. We have forgiveness from heaven. We have a family, heavenly family. We have a friend. He's in heaven now. And we have fellowship with him. Fellowship with him. First John chapter 1 verse 3. And we have favor with God and man. With God and man. Anytime you can get to the throne of God. And then you can receive all the mercy you need. And all the blessings you need. And everything is yours in Jesus name. Heavenly Father, number one, forgiveness, number two, family, number three, friends, number four, fellowship, number five, favor, number six, we have a fountain that will never run dry. Fountain that will never run dry. You have it. Are you a child of God? I said you have it. Let all your problems be solved tonight in Jesus' name. Revelation chapter 21. Revelation chapter 21. I'm reading here from verse 6. Revelation chapter 21 verse 6. And he said unto me, it is done. Amen. I thought my people would say amen. amen. And he said unto me, it is done. Amen. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him. Are you there? I will give unto him that is the thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. It's coming your way. All the blessings of the children of God, they belong to you tonight. And he says, if you are thirsty, if you say, Lord, I'm your child now. I want to become your child. Make me your child. And then I have this fountain that will never run dry. Your blessing will never run dry. Your joy will never run dry. The peace of God will never run dry. And the strength you have coming from the fountain will never run dry in Jesus' name. Abundance is coming your way. Spiritual blessing coming your way. All your needs are fulfilled. You have a fountain that never shall run dry. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer. See what the Lord has taught us today. And see the revelation of God for every one of us today. And see what he has promised you. He said, now you can say, I'm a child of God. Are you born again? Are you a child of God? Have you given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ? Have you said, oh Lord, I believe belong to you. Oh Lord, I belong to you. Have you come out of the world? Have you come out of darkness? Have you come out of your sin? Have you come out of evil? Have you said, Lord, soul, spirit, and body, my total life, entire life, I surrender unto Christ. If you've not done that before, you can do it now. You can do it now and say, Lord, I give myself to you. Lord, I surrender myself to you. Lord, I totally come, voluntarily I come, out of darkness I come to the light. He is a shining light and is the light for everyone. The shining light and the light for everyone. You will not be lost. You will not perish. You will not die in sin because Jesus Christ the Savior has died for you. It's your Savior. It's your Savior. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. He will forgive your sin. God will become your heavenly father. He'll grant you favor. He'll grant you forgiveness. He's going to grant you all the blessings from the throne of God. And it's a fountain that never runs dry. A fountain that never runs dry. A fountain that never runs dry. Joy unlimited. Peace unlimited. Power unlimited. Every need is supplied. Every need is supplied for every child of God. Say, Lord, I belong to you. And the Spirit of God crying in your heart, Abba, Father, Abba, Father, Abba, Father, you will not cast me away. You love me. You love me. You love me. And I know Jesus died for me on the cross of Calvary. Receive him now. Lord, I receive you. Receive him now, Lord, I receive you. I open the door of my heart. I believe, I believe, I believe. He has accepted me. He has forgiven me. 
He has changed my life. I believe. I believe my sins are forgiven. I believe he died for me on the cross of Calvary. Lord, I believe. And then the fountain is open for you. He'll wash all your sins away. He'll take all your guilt away. He'll give you peace of mind. He'll give you the joy of salvation. He'll give you victory. He'll give you the power to go and live in newness of life. It's yours. It's yours. Accept. It's yours. Believe. It's yours. Salvation has come. Salvation has come. Salvation has come. And the cleansing blood of Jesus is effective in your heart right now. And do you know it's your savior? Do you know it's your healer? Do you know it's your sanctifier? Do you know it's your redeemer? It redeem you from the power of darkness. All those negative things will cancel from your life. And now you understand, he sends you forth as a witness. And then you talk about Christ everywhere you go. The joy of your life is talking about Christ. The joy of your being is talking about Christ. And you'll be a faithful witness, a fearless witness, a flaming, fiery witness, forthright, forthright. Telling people politely, wisely, convincingly that Jesus is your Savior and can be their Savior. In Jesus' name we pray. And the happy people of God said, Let's bow the eyes closed. If you have not given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ and you want to do it now, I want to seal the deal, make the covenant to the Lord. I come out of my sin, I come out of darkness, I come out of the control of Satan, and I come and give my life to the Lord Jesus Christ. So that from today, all your sins are forgiven. And everything negative is cancelled out of your life. And then he'll write your name in the book of life in heaven. Anywhere you are, inside, outside, just raise up that hand and say, Lord, here am I. Wonderful. Here am I. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Praise the Lord. Keep that hand up. Outside, keep that hand up. Anywhere you are, keep that hand up. Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your love. We thank you because you call everyone. And all these that have raised up their hands and they're coming to you, Lord, I pray, receive them in Jesus' name. Forgive their sins in Jesus' name. Take their guilt away. Bring peace in their heart. Rest in their mind. And I pray that you cancel the judgment against their lives in Jesus' name. And I pray, Lord, the Spirit will be a witness in their heart. There's peace, there's joy, there's salvation. They're now children of God in Jesus' name. Write their names in the book of life in heaven. Confirm it in their hearts, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Those of us who are children of God, you are saying, I'm a child of God. I've given my life to the Lord and I will never go back. I said I will never go back. I will never go back. You raise up your hand. You say, Lord, I give, I've given myself to you. I belong to you. Satan will not get me anymore. Evil spirit will not get me anymore. My old sin will not get me anymore. The world will not get me anymore. I surrender afresh. I surrender afresh. I surrender afresh. My heart, my life, everything wholeheartedly, I surrender unto you. Welcome the power. That power will keep you. Welcome the power. That power will hold you. It will keep you from falling. In Jesus' name we pray. Keep that hand up. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for your people. I pray as they have given themselves unto you voluntarily. They have received it. They have believed you. I pray, Lord, they will be sons of God. They will be daughters of God. And all the privileges of sons and daughters will belong to everyone in Jesus' name. You are their savior, be their sanctifier. 
You are the sanctifier, be the baptizer and the Holy Ghost. You are the baptizer, be the gift of God in their lives. And Lord, I pray, everything you are promised in your word, confirm it in every one of their lives, in Jesus' name. Father, you are the Redeemer. You are the Creator. You are the Almighty. There is nothing impossible for you. Every mountain will move before you. Every sickness will move before you. And therefore, I bring every one of your children unto you. I'm asking, Lord, sickness will not stay in their body. Calamity will not be in their family. Lord, I command all that sickness in your body, come out in Jesus' name. And all the works of the devil, Lord Jesus who came, so that you'll destroy the works of the devil definitely 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 for that brother for that sister i pray every walk of the devil be destroyed in jesus name and you translate your people out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light and i pray lord light will shine in their heart will shine in their family and i pray lord anything that is coming like a, like a destroyer in their business and their family upon their children upon their wife upon their husband upon their family all that destroyer i command you come out in jesus name and remove your hand away from them and lord i pray as they go out you protect them as they come in you protect them that everyone will be the apple of the eye of the lord that that is my child you will command the devil they will not touch your child you will command those demons they will not touch your child and i pray lord there'll be a wall of fire around everyone you go out you are blessed you come in you are blessed everywhere you go the blessings of the lord will follow after you heaven will know hell will recognize the earth will recognize that you are a child of god in the day in the night in the dream anywhere you are that confidence i'm a child of god will never leave you in jesus name goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life and eventually that home the lord has gone to prepare you'll be there you will be there you will be there all the power and the grace you need be given unto you lord confirm your blessing in every life in jesus name i pray